Rhetorical Quest. last three speeches dealt with dealing with our anxiety in a public speech. I thought that was important to deal with right away because often people are worried about giving a speech. And a lot of times, if we can just get over our anxiety and step into the speech, we start doing okay. Now that we're past that, we can start getting into the meat of public speaking. And that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to start out by talking about the types of public speaking. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, there are hundreds of types of public speeches. That's true. If you started thinking about all other speeches that we give in politics, speeches that are given at churches, speeches that are given uh, at, at Christmas time, speeches that are given uh, in houses, speeches that are given on lawns, speeches that are given... And you can start listing off contexts for speeches, and before long, you will have hundreds of them. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about contexts of speeches. I'm talking about speeches given uh, more broadly. And really, if we want to think about it, there are only three types of speeches. Aristotle was the first one to develop this idea that there are really just three types of speeches, and that was 2,500 years ago. Since then, we've looked in a lot of different situations and contexts have developed. Did Aristotle have the idea of the online speech? Of course not. But if we look at it and we take Aristotle's ideas of three types of speeches and we take that apart, we can say that even though we have contexts Aristotle never would have thought of, and places where people will give speeches, and really media through which speeches travel that never would have occurred to Aristotle, we still see that even in these contexts and even in these new media, there are three kinds of speeches. The first type of speech is an epideictic speech. Epideictic speeches we sometimes call ceremonial. Uh, ceremonial speeches because one of the places where epideictic speeches are given are in our ceremonies. We give these types of speeches at funerals and at weddings. But we give these speeches in other contexts too. If you are sitting down to a, with friends at a dinner party and you offer a toast, you're given an epideictic speech. Epideictic speeches are speeches about values. What are things that we value? Well, we could make a list of infinite things that we value. Uh, we value time spent in relationships. We value our family. We value having a healthy body. We value our, in, our intelligence. We value our ability to give a good speech. All of these things are things that we value. Uh, and epideictic speeches tend to be focused on the present. These aren't things that we valued or things that we did. They are things that we value right now. What matters? You might say, well, I thought you said that we give this type of spe speeches at funerals. Well, we do. I recently had a hamster die. And... It was just me, my wife, and my hamster body uh, at the little funeral we had for it. It wasn't, you know, a big ornate deal. Hamsters die. You usually don't live much more than two years. And so it wasn't like we were going to have a big ordeal for it. But when we, when we laid the body to rest, uh, I did want to say a few words. The hamster that had died had been a particularly, well, naughty hamster. And when we laid her down, uh, you know, I pointed out that she had always been the hamster that would escape from the cage. And she would go around and do things. And her desire for freedom, and her desire to be on her own, and her desire to press and figure out what her limits are, we talked about that. And you know what? We talked about how we admired those things about her. We admire those things about her. See, even though it's, she's dead and it's in the past, 
our admiration for this, this pressing of limits, that's something that we still hold on to, and that's something we value. Epideictic speeches are speeches that focus on the present. But deliberative speeches are speeches that focus on the future. We certainly want our politicians who are deciding our policies to have good, strong values in the present. But we want that so that they will make good decisions in the future. In a deliberative speech, you are trying to convince somebody to do something. Usually we think of deliberative speeches in terms of politics because they have to do with policies. But it's also a deliberative speech when you go to your boss and tell him you think that you should change some of the ways you do things around here. It's also a deliberative speech if, if somebody comes up to you as a customer and tries to convince you to buy their product. It's a deliberative speech when a person tries to convince you to go to their church. It's a deliberative speech when somebody tries to uh, persuade you to do almost anything. Any time that we're engaged in an activity where we're trying to change somebody's thoughts or somebody's behaviors, we are asking them to engage in a deliberative speech. Deliberative speeches are what we usually think of as persuasive speeches. Now, even though we usually think of those as persuasive speeches, that's not entirely accurate. See, in ep epideictic speeches, we were trying to persuade somebody uh, to value particular things. In a, in a deliberative speech, we're trying to get a person to do particular things. The third type of public speaking is forensic speaking, and it's kind of persuasive too. In those type of the speeches, we're trying to get people to believe certain facts. Forensic speaking is the third type of speaking. It's speeches about facts, and it's po focused on the past. Now, you might hear that word forensic and think, is that like CSI? Well, sort of. Forensic science is the science of trying to figure out what happened, usually in a crime scene situation. Forensics is related to that because it's about trying to figure out what happened, too. If forensic science is finding up out, uh, is the science of figuring out what's in the past? Forensics, which is different than forensic science, but a similar word, forensics is about telling what happened in the past. And forensic speeches are speeches about facts. The speech I'm giving right now is a forensic speech. I'm telling you the facts. The facts are that there are three types of public speaking, epideictic, deliberative, and forensic. Those are the three kinds. Any time that a teacher speech speaks, it's usually a forensic speech. It's a speech trying to give facts. A lot of times in classes, we'll tell people to give an informational speech or an informative speech. An informative speech is another word for a forensic speech. We're trying to give information. It is still persuasive, though, because we're trying to get people to believe the information we're giving them. So let me just go back and recap what we've talked about. There are three basic types of speeches. Epideictic speeches, which are speeches about values and focused on the present. They are ceremonial speeches. There are speeches of, that are deliberative. Deliberative speeches are, are about policy and focused on the future. These are the most persuasive speeches, although all speeches persuade a little bit. They are speeches about policy. Finally, there are speeches about facts. These are forensic speeches. Forensic speeches are about facts, are focused on the, fa on the past, and are informative, and teaching speeches. So these are the three types of speeches. 
What we've covered now is how to deal with our anxiety and the three types of speeches. In the videos that follow, we're going to start to deal with some other parts of public speaking. How to come up with a speech, how to deliver it, uh, how we should put together our words for that speech, how we should arrange the parts of our speech, how is it that we can remember our speech. All of these will be dealt with in future videos. Thank you for learning about the three basic types of speech.